What an excitement I had. What an excitement. As my wife and I were for the first time alone together. And I wanted to express my love toward my wife. So I said to her, I want to know you. You know, I want to know you. I want to know all about you. I want to know, you know, what did you do when you were a little girl? Did you have dolls? What were their names? How, what did you play? What kind of games? You, I want to know everything and everything about you. Do you think that's what I said to her? No. I wanted to know my wife. But I wanted to know her in a way that nobody else on the world in the world knows her. You understand? Because that knowledge that I have of my wife, that knowledge, nobody in the world has that knowledge. I'm the only one that knows my wife that way. There's a lot of people know her, you know, because of how she looks and so on, and they've met her, and uh, she, she's not a bad cook, she's pretty good actually, and so she's made, you know, the meals for many, many people, and they know her, they say you're a good cook, but I know her in a way that you don't know her, or nobody knows her, you understand? Listen, when you tell me that you love God, do you know God in a way that nobody else in the world knows Him? Uh -huh. Or do you just know Him? Oh, well, so do thousands of other people. They know God. They can tell me God is love. I say, is God love? They say, yeah, 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 yeah. God is love. Why? Because they know God. Uh, well, what do you know? Well, God created the heavens and the earth. See, they know God. But I'm going to tell you, I have a knowledge of God that nobody in the world has exactly like my knowledge of God. Why? I've been in the conception chamber. There's a word in the Bible called to know God. What does it mean to know God? The Apostle Paul said that I might know Him and the power of His resurrection. Paul said, I want to know God. I want to really know Him. Not about Him. Not to be able to tell you what God did. I want to know God. You will not know God outside of the conception chamber. Did you hear that? You will not know God just by reading the Bible. You will not know God just by singing choruses. You will not know God just by praying. You will know God when He takes you into the conception chamber and there is an intimate relationship. Beloved, I want you to be changed today. I want to be able to leave here and see some of you people, you will never be the same again. Because if you can enter into this reality today, I want to tell you, your life will be one great day of joy, peace and love. Amen. So, in the conception chamber, we discover what it means to know God. The Greek word is gnosis, K-N-O-S-I-S. If you want to make it into a more substantial knowledge, you put the little word epi, E-P-I, on the front of it, in the Greek language. Epi, gnosis. But gnosis is the word, the Greek word, from which we get our word knowledge. That's where it comes from. It comes from the Greek word gnosis. What does that word really mean? Is he talking about intellectual knowledge? No. Is he talking about the kind of knowledge that you have by what you see? No. Is he talking about the kind of knowledge that you can get a book all about God and read it and say, well, then I know God. 
No, it's got nothing to do with that. What kind of knowledge is Paul talking about when he said that I might know him, that I might know God and the power of his resurrection? If you want to see the meaning of this word, let me show you a verse in the Bible which is self-explanatory. It's in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1 if you've got your Bible. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1. What does it say? And Adam knew what? His wife. That's what it means. Are you hearing this? That is what it means. Adam knew his wife. And what was the result of that? They had a child. Because when you know God, that is intimately, that is in a way that nobody else really knows him, it will be you and the knowledge you have of God that each one of us will have with God and it's not exactly the same God knows what you need some people are very sure on love some people have lived you know maybe their parents died when they were young and they've grown up and you know like there's not much love in their life they didn't have anybody to really love them those people when they hear of this message about love, I tell you, something changes. When God takes them into the conception chamber and He puts His arms around them, we're talking spiritually now, and when He kisses them, I want to tell you there's an ecstasy, there's a joy, there's something, we call it love, it's an emotion. The most powerful emotion that a man or a woman can have is the emotion of love. And it rises up in that person and oh, from that moment, they know that they're loved. They know that God loves them. Many of you people have never had this experience, I can see by the look on your face. You say, God loves me. You say, I believe that. Yeah, does God love me? Yes, 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 God loves me. But you have never experienced it where it has gotten inside of you and lifted up your emotion of love to the point where, oh God, I'm in heaven. 